K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> Game on where progressives fear us and rhinos tremble. Welcome to the political jungle. I'm JD. This is Stacy. No one is safe. No one is spared. Lock up the children. And the old folk. Welcome to the world of Libertarian Conservatarian. Guadalupe, it's the Grease Men, JD and Stacy's Sunday morning chat room monitor. A little pro life tip. You don't come and tell people that you want to apologize for being a jerk off by telling people you've been a jerk off. Good Sunday morning, April 3rd, 2016, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. JD and Stacy here, game on, part of that Conservative Commandos Radio Network on that K98 Talk. It's primary free Sunday, baby. Welcome back to all our political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. Everybody right now within the sound of my very, very morning dub voice, you know exactly what to do. Get over to K98talk.org right now. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Say hello to the drunkest from the pictures they send to Zoeve Schmier. Nakedest listening political radio audience in the business. JD and Stacy, baby, it's game on, but we're still curing your mainstream media. Hang on. I do like waking up to the loud music, though. Gonna do what now? You like what? I like waking up to the louder music. I'd like to wake up any way I could. It's not love, I'm, I'm going to tell you what. I am, I am so asleep this morning. Let's see. What does JD want to wake up to? How about this? What, what, what do you think? Yeah. How about this? This is a nice pre and post church song, right? How are you? I'm good. 
good. <laughs> very excited about our largely primary free show today. Today is very early Sunday morning. We're going to be talking, oh, Boo Boo Threw's a nuke party, but the popular girls don't show up. Wah. Omar, Hillary, and who goes lesbian in jail? First baby. Weekend update, nonsense of the world, and more. Remember, guys, we're not just live here at 11 a.m. for that game on and that K98 Talk. We do it again Tuesday, Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on K98 Talk for that game on Friday, 5 p.m. Drive Time. We got a show, a little media market called Philadelphia on that WNJC 1360 a.m. Oh, it also serves Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? After the show, Hoople's not during it. Get over to Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacey, J-D-A-N-D-S-T-A-C-E-Y. Find out a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Tiki Tavi Rick Robinson, that K98 Talk, and that cantankerous Rick Trader over that NWNWN, JC, 1360 AM. Good morning. I told you I am not going to wake up this morning. I wish, you know, we maybe worked out at the same studio and I'd just kick you. And you just kick me? Hold on a second. I got to hit the little audio radio man on the boat. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Am I awake now? Am I awake? Oh, I don't think I'm awake yet. <laughs> Consider yourself digitally kicked. Okay, terrific. Uh, digitally no. How about how about I just digitally do this right now? All right, now you have to show yourself for the next 49 minutes. <laughs> I don't have the soundboard. Uh, I'll give you one of these. Those men wanted to have sex with me. <laughs> Does that describe your Saturday night? Oh, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this to you before, and you know this. You've seen the tattoo. You've seen the statue with the engraving on it. When it comes to JD, women love me. Men want to be me. Just don't hate me because I'm beautiful, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, terrific. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so how's your week? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> There you go. Oh, all right. Today we're going to be talking about, we're going to have a little weekend update. Uh, we're going to go into <laughs> Obama throws a nuclear summit on his way out the door, which is basically just a photo op, you know, for the guys in sheets and the idiots with crowns. And don't worry about it, guys. All the nuclear material is out of South America. Uh, Uma and Hillary are praying not to have to go lesbian in the shower in prison, baby. We're going to explain that a little bit. We got some nonsense of the world. But as always on Sunday morning, we're going to bring you that weekend update for the weekend ending April 3rd, 2016. Bill, that Mr. Eric Williams from that barbed wire satire.com, baby. I haven't read the last joke, but my co-host said, cross it out. This week, Donald Trump said he would be releasing a list of judges he would submit to the Supreme Court if he wins. Seeking to calm conservatives' concerns that he might nominate liberal judges, Trump's shortlist includes Judge Ito from the O.J. case, Judge Dredd, Beavis and Butthead creator Mike Judge, and talent judge Simon Cowell. I think Williams is back. <laughs> President Obama creepily challenged kids at the annual White House Easter egg roll to start to a starting contest. My, Michelle told the children not to blink and to pretend they were hypnotized. The contest didn't last long, though, as the kids just drew red lines in the sand and Obama blinked first. Well, did you, did you hear Michelle Obama asking the kids uh, uh, when they found the eggs to uh, put them in the basket? What the f*** in the basket? Uh. <laughs> the Corey Lewandowski-Michelle Fields dispute should be settled soon. Reportedly, a judge will sentence Lewandowski to douchebag rehab for 60 days. And Michelle will be sent home with a video that fully explains what being pulled to the ground actually... I, I don't know if I need a shower or if it moved a little bit on that one. <laughs> Nutritionist <laughs> unveiled the latest weight loss plan that is sure to shed many pounds for most people. The plan is simple. Patients are instructed to go for a backwards walk every time Donald Trump has a walk back, has to walk back a stupid comment. Many patients are already experiencing amazing results. I think we have the next late night infomercial. Yes, Vince Slapchat, these nuts. Yeah, baby, walk backwards. The latest job numbers for March were a mixed bag. Jobs in the manufacturing, retail, housing, and energy sectors were off. However, thanks mainly to George Soros, Democrats were able to add 200,000 new paid protesting jobs last month as the agitation industry continues to outperform all other areas. 
While in Washington this week, Turkey's president warned that critics who continue to insult him will be sued. Some journalists and other critics of the president have already been imprisoned in the first few days since Donald Trump was sworn in as the country's new leader. <laughs> After a casting call of... Hey, where are the white women at? For an upcoming production of the Vagina Monologues, oh, vomit, brought in too many white girls and their hoo-hahs. Southwestern University, outside of... Oh, I cannot tell you how badly I am editing this joke. Southwestern University, outside of Austin, is canceled. Oh, what are you kidding? We said white women and hoo-ha in the same thing. That's good enough. That was the weekend update brought to you by that Mr. Eric Williams and that barbwiresatire.com, baby. <laughs> And yes, the way that this Sunday morning is going, I was completely acceptable of punching out on... Hey, where are the white women at? And who has <laughs> And for those of you who are new to the program, we actually are a, a, a Christian show. <laughs> We're just not a good Christian show. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a compound. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Whose turn was it to stir the Kool-Aid today? <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not green, I'll do it. Oh, my God. And for those of you who have never been to New York, let me give you one night in Brooklyn. Here we come. Walk down the street. Uh, me. what are you f- stupid? It's a f- crowd out there. Don't worry about it. Get down. Get down. Just explain my 20s. <laughs> wow. JD's living okay, in his own terrific. this morning. Uh, oh, we are a Christian program. Oh, no. JD and Stacey. Preaching to you from the church of that K98 talk, baby. Where well, you gotta love Jesus like your baby more than you love chicken and gravy. <laughs> I think you just found your new Sunday morning intro. <laughs> J.D. and Stacy, where you got to love Jesus and your baby more than you love chicken and gravy. Wow, what a tagline. <laughs> this is why you're not in charge of marketing. Oh, my God. And for those of you who want to know what's going on in my head right now. Like I've been drinking ouzo for a week and I haven't. <laughs> oh dear lord! What the hell is this show about today? <laughs> uh, well, I think we were gonna discuss Hillary and Uma first. Um, do you want to do that first and then and then leave the uh, the, the, the the mock you in session for the last part? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! He flashed a peace sign. He fl- Remind me when we oh, talked about that. Well, that's because he inhaled all the smoke from the protest outside the White House. Well, you want to know what that's like? You know, you know what? There's, there's a whole bit in there on that being like an Obama gang. So I'll tell you what. Peace, bitches. Right, right, right. Yeah. West, wing, right. Po- West wing posse, son. Oh, God. <laughs> so for those of you who were worried that we forgot about. <laughs> You've got me. We didn't. And we were so happy to be able to give you topics today <laughs> that do not involve this primary until Tuesday. Yay. Well, uh, this all started this week, J.D., when it was announced, oddly enough, first caught by Al Jazeera TV, um, that the director of the FBI is oh, bringing Durka, Durka, the em- Durka. <laughs> is bringing the Empress of Chappaqua herself in for questioning. Oh, of course. Here she comes. Who do you think has to put the helmet on her head every day? Who puts that Hillary mask on, that robot? <laughs> Oma! Oma! Oma, where's my soup? Oma! Is it time for Jeopardy yet? Oh my, Bill has AIDS. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so when I was going back and, and I was looking at this for the show, uh, no surprise, 
you saw a bunch of stories within the last, say, uh, four to seven days about certain of uh, Hillary's aides being compelled to testify in what is looking to be a, a snowballing investigation here by the FBI. When I went back and looked, Stacey, I think the first person who actually had the fact that that Uma was starting to get nervous and was going to be compelled to testify, no surprise, is that Cheryl Atkinson. And then you would see the reporting coming up. And basically, the first thing that jumped out at me, maybe because I'm sick, did you see the statement? Was this in? And I think one of the best pieces of this um, is by Jazz Shaw over at Hot Air. This was uh, what, Mm -hmm. last night, Stace? Yep, Jazz Shaw. And um, she's terrified that they may subpoena the entirety of her emails. Now, she says, where the hell is the thing in here? Oh, Uma Abedin hasn't freshly read any of her email exchanges with Hillary Clinton that have been released by the State Department. But the longtime Clinton aide said it is, quote, terrifying to know that the messages are out there. Quote, it's something I can't really think about, but I can't even imagine what's in those emails. I want you to think about this. This is the woman that's married to the guy that was a congressman who sent pictures of his schmeckle all over the interwebs and then waited, what, four weeks and went, that's enough time, I'm going to run for mayor, and then was bounced out as a disgrace. Now, I want you to think about how toxic that is in politics. Uma Abedin is married to the disgraced congressman Anthony Weiner. That would sink you from knowing the intimate details of a campaign at any level in any campaign except in Clinton land. So of that course. tells me that Uma Abedin knows more than anybody else except maybe Cheryl Mills where all the Clinton bodies are buried in this scandal. Now, let me go back to my sickness. She's terrified of what they're going to find in her emails. Okay. So if her husband, at the point her husband sent a picture of his joint to billions of people on the interwebs, do you think that was the first time he did something like that? No. Which means that these two disgraces are probably been doing this for you. God knows what they're going to find in these emails. Well, God knows what they're going to find in these emails, but also, you know, it has been alleged and, and demonstrated for some time that Uma Abedin has ties to people that are within the network of the Muslim Brotherhood, both here in the U.S. and abroad. Um, you know, those oh, were her email communications. God only knows what they're contained, not just about her stupid, disgusting, awful husband, yeah. um, but about her own political ties to maybe organizations that people have a lot of suspicion about. And it's not just the fact that they're going to, you know, now question Hillary Clinton that's got people up in arms. But earlier this month, on March 3rd, the thing that got this ball rolling was that the DOJ granted immunity to the staffer who set the stupid server up in the first place. And now the State Department is saying they're suspending their investigation so as not to interfere with that of the FBI. So the State Department at this point, and part of what got Uma all upset, is hands off. That IG is done until the FBI is done. Now that... Was that a call by the State Department to the IG's office, or did the IG make an independent call to do that? I'm, it, you know, that that level of detail did not come ag- come out, but it was basically um, stated the FBI, you know, has taken over the show, according to ABC News, and the State Department has halted its internal review of Hillary Clinton's most sensitive emails until the FBI's own investigation is complete, the State Department announced today. So... Um, The actual quote was, we do not want our internal review to complicate or impede the FBI probe, spokeswoman Elizabeth Trudeau said. We are prioritizing the law enforcement investigation. Now, there is some urgency around this, being that she is the front runner for the Democratic nomination. This needs to be put to bed one way or the other before the Democratic National Convention. You know, I'm re- I'm really glad I'm really glad you said that because I know that that conservatives and we have about a minute left here. We're going to pick back up on this on the other side. But one of the things I want the audience to put in their hopper and think about for a second. You know, everybody's ex- not excited, but everybody's going. You know, finally, maybe the wheels of justice are turning because we keep hearing about how independent Comey is. We keep hearing that there's just about 150 agents working on this. We hear that um, they're compelling t- people to testify and that there might be a mass resignation if there's not some 
some kind of grand jury indictment. Mark Levin made a great point in the show the other night. Um, if you speak to anybody out in the legal field or D.C. insiders or anything like that, if there was a grand jury that was impaneled and convened, somebody would know that at this point. So when we come back on the other side of the break, we're going to speak about uh, uh, what's been disclosed, it looks like, as the, the Clinton Gate. Uh, legal strategy and um, whether or not that's a foot drag. And then we're going to have a boo-boo's little... Oh, I'm going to throw myself a little White House prom. I cannot stand this schmeckle face jerk off. No, Rick, I didn't cut the new breaks yet, but hopefully for Tuesday, baby. J.D. and Stacey, game on. The show to get in so big. Diamond Dave just got to take us to break. Baby. One break coming up. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. your health care plan you'll be able to keep your health care plan this is the most transparent administration in history not even a smidgen of corruption fact is we had four dead americans what difference at this point does it make if you've got a business you didn't build that the feeling most people get when they hear a barack obama speech my i felt this thrill going up my leg i well, mean i don't have that too often steady it's time to hear the truth about america's biggest challenges Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of the Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio right here on K98 Talk. From the Vikings of Norway to my home down south to Washington, D.C., I've been around. I've seen it all, and I've come out on top. You better beware, for all you know, the bell tolls for you. Enter the bell tower or watch your step. 8 p.m. Thursdays, K98 Talk. Welcome back. J.D. and Stacy here. Game on. Part of that conservative commandos radio network here on that K98 talk. Everybody within the sound of my voice right now, you know exactly what to do on my Sunday morning voice, baby. You get over to K98talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Say hello to the drunkest. Oy vey schmear. Naked the smartest political listening audience in the business. Remember, guys, we're not just here live Sunday morning, 11 a.m. We do it again live Tuesday, Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on that game on. On that game on at K98 Talk, Friday, 5 p.m. drive time, leading into that Yahoo Sports. You can find us on 1360 WNJC, AM serving at Philadelphia, Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware. After the show, guys, get over to Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacey, J-D-A-N-D-S-T-A-C-E-Y. Find a catalog of everything we've been doing here on that K98 Talk and that 1360 WNJC. JD and Stacey, baby, we are not your daddy's talk radio. So listen, when, when people tell you, ah, back in the day, I know talk radio, say, listen to JD and Stacey, and let me tell you something. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Welcome back, baby. 
<laughs> I've been telling people that two days. That's not how any of this works. Oh, Stealing well. my delegates. God. Stop. You sound stupid. Oh, we had a we had a uh, um, we have breaking audio. This is from the Donald Trump um, delegate. You know how you have to have the, your delegate ground game in place. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a comment from the delegate ground game team. I bring nothing to the table. Um. <laughs> Good God! And I know it's primary free Sunday, but did you see? You know, you know, and Stacy and I have been have been going over in the program um, how. Not antiquated, but intricate. Intricate. These uh, these different rules are between the states and the national party for the delegates. Did you see through somehow the Cruz campaign snagged six delegates from Colorado before the vote actually happened? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> they might snag all fifty from South Carolina because of Big Mouth. Oh my god! Oh, I, and as, as a matter of fact, we have breaking audio from the Cruz campaign delegate campaign team to the Trump delegate campaign team. Who is your daddy? And what does he do? <laughs> I own you, bitch. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, can we go oh. back to can we go yeah. back to the Empress now? Of course we you know what? That's we were just we were just bitching that we didn't have enough uh, here. Of course we can. <laughs> And those are not drums in the background. Those are actually Hillary's ankles rubbing together as she walks. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we were looking at this latest development <sighs> with uh, with Miss Clinton actually being uh, brought in by the FBI for questioning, uh, we we started poking around it and found one really interesting story from Politico about the team's legal strategy. Now, what I find to be most interesting about this article is that four of Clinton's top aides and participants in this whole email server gate nonsense um, are being represented by the same individual who we'll go over in a minute. But you know who's not? The guy who set it up, who has immunity, and Uma Abedin. That's right. And 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 the, the four of the the Clinton confidants that are involved in this that have consolidated into a single uh, legal strategy, and they're being represented by Bel Beth Wilkinson. Who's Beth Wilkinson? Well, she's a well-connected former assistant U.S. attorney, best known for prosecuting Oklahoma City bomber Tim Timothy McVeigh. Right. That 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 is at the top of the political story. What you have to go several paragraphs deep into to really understand the incestuous nature of Washington, she is also David Gregory, the former host of Meet the Press, <laughs> ex-wife, ex-wife. So when and a Clinton donor, and a Clinton donor. I mean, these people are in bed together like billionaires and hookers on weird Bill Clinton billionaire sex midget island. It, it, well, it, it I mean, is, it just reinforces the the idea of the clinton machine i mean it is vast so now you have the 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 guy i don't know if you have his name Sa uh, Sa i don't know if you have his name sandy i told you this is going to be a long day i don't know if you have his <laughs> name handy stacy um the 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 gentleman that set up the server who they're given immunity to but the four clinton confidants who are going to be using beth wilkinson and what looks like a singular strategy are cheryl mills who is uh um hillary's former chief of staff you know when you read about clinton land it's it, it's hard to tell it seems like cheryl mills and uma abedin you know, both have about the same amount of access and influence. I think they're really the the the. the I think the primary difference is Mills is gone and Ub and Aberdeen is still working with her. Right, and it's almost like a Don Cons Consigliere uh, situation. Yeah. So you have Cheryl Mills, uh, Jake Sullivan, who is deputy deputy chief of staff, uh, Heather Samuelson. Uh, ba, 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 and Claude Rains, who's been with the Clintons since since Bubba was president in the nineties, and basically. You know, it's interesting that so if you have if you have four defendants or, or four possible defendants who are using the same attorney, it tells you that they're going to be telling the same story because the attorney would not be able to represent all four in the same manner if each were giving conflicting statements or uh, uh, statements against interest of any of the other four. Well, and my bet is that's why Uma Abedin and James Pagliano, the guy who set up the server, are not included in that bunch. 
That's right. That and that was there any mention as to to being that she thinks she's going to testify who is going to represent Aberdeen? Didn't see that. No. But the other thing that I found very interesting in this article is they're saying, given that this is the Clinton legal strategy, um, folks are saying that looks like this investigation is just not that serious, that, that they can take these four people and put them together, especially Cheryl Mills, who was much closer to Hillary Clinton than any of the other three um, and and probably far more um a measured confidant similar to Uma Abedin, but they're actually saying that they they take a look at this being the legal punditry and, and folks watching the situation, and they say that the fact that these four are combining their legal strategy is giving some kind of signal that this whole process is just not serious. Well, you know, and my question to it was, is this process not serious, or is this a running-out-the-clock process taking a bet that she's going to get elected president because if you look at this so you have the four of them right now represented by the same by the same attorney you know y- y- all of us have been around the legal system at, at one point or another in our life and you know that the the wheels of justice turn incredibly slowly baby so that being said you know you start making motions to separate and get new counsel it's april right now their convention mm-hmm. is in june or july and the election is in november so if you couple that with the fact that people on the ground and with their to the insider saying they haven't even heard about a grand jury convening you know is this i i think that if there's not an indictment or this is still dragging out and there is no statement or no signal from james comey then this is just a political dog and pony show and 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 right now i don't know whether it's a serious investigation or a smokescreen. Well, you know, now, I've always taken Comey to be a somewhat serious individual, and you do hear those rumors and, and uh, ideas about, you know, large-scale revolts if this is not taken seriously. So, I mean, I, I don't know, but, you know, other attorneys and former prosecutors and U.S. attorneys have weighed in on this strategy and are basically saying they can't, envision or even contemplate that there would not be a conflict of interest in having these four people represented jointly at some point in this process. I want you to think about what you just said, though. I want you to Mm -hmm. think about what you just said in the context of Washington, D.C. Well, you know, I've always heard that James Comey, I've heard the same thing, that James Comey Comey is a very straight shooter, and, you know, everybody respects James Comey, said da-da-da-da-da. Let me just drop two words on you about what Washington does to people and about whether you can look at anybody as uh, above the Washington corruption. Uh, uh, Three words. Dr. Ben Carson. Ugh. But but you you, you know what I'm saying? Ugh. You know, Comey might have been the greatest sainted thing of all time, you know, but but, but the Clintons have been been burying bodies in the backyard. You know, I mean, you got got that poor Vince Foster, baby. (laughs) And you got Bill Clinton. Hey, where are the white women at? Because he has AIDS. (laughs) God. All right, so Stacy and I are going to be we're going to be keeping an eye on this. You know, it is the beginning of April right now. You basically have about two and a half months, uh, maybe three, for this to all shake out, and uh, we're all going to find out if it leads to. Uh... You've got. Wouldn't that be great if they just put her in the slammer? That would be so fantastic. She looks so bad in orange. Oh, my God. All right, so now we actually have a nuclear summit that really doesn't involve... Oh, derka, derka, derka. But it does involve... I don't even know where to start with this. This was such Well, I mean, it kind of starts last fall. In October of last... In October, Russia started saying, yeah, we, we ain't playing anymore will operate through the IAEA, through the United Nations, and, and work, you know, on nuclear issues in that body, but we're not coming to these summits anymore. And what, what, why don't you explain to the, to the kids what summit you're talking about? Well, in this week, the uh, administration in Chicago hosted the, what you know, a summit regarding nuclear weapons and nuclear proliferation. It's generally included about 50 countries. Um, It's been ongoing work that's been going for, what, I don't know, 
I think they started talking about statistics that are six decades old at this point in terms of stopping proliferation. It's a joke. It's Obama's first uh, uh, summit of this kind in about six years. And the only reason he's Mm -hmm. having it now is because Obubu the Schmeckle face jerk off is heading out the door of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. So for him, it's all about legacy. And if you want to know what kind of a joke. that Well, and he wants to head the U.N. Well, listen, he, he's got that in the bag already. You know, I, I, that, that's going to be the next thing. But, I mean, if you want to know what kind, of, what kind of a joke this is, they say there's well, more than 50 world leaders. However, to Stacey's point, who wasn't there, was the, the, Soviet, the Soviet Union. I don't know what the difference is anymore. But Russia, Russia and Putin, you know, because they have no interest in, you know, I actually think it's insane that if you take a look at what's going on now with the Russians, so the, the, the power move through the Ukraine and the other parts of, of, of the Baltics have mostly used paramilitary forces that you couldn't really... They, they were Russian forces, but they weren't Russian forces, if, if, if you follow what I mean. So if you take a look at, at a superpower who's willing to, to, to use tactics such as that, the fact that... As part of the Iran deal, we're using Russia as a conduit to get rid of some of this nuclear material is absolutely insane. It's a farce. It's a big mock UN fantasy that Obama threw. So you have Russia doesn't show up. So, I mean, okay, basically it's a nothing. But this is the joke of this administration and and, and just how detached they are on foreign policy and national security. I'll give you two things. First of all, Obama... For the second time in three weeks, is, is he, he, is on, he is on the communist icon photo tour before he's out of office. He takes a picture with the Castros knowingly in front of a huge mural of Che in Cuba about 10 days ago. With the fist up and the whole nine. You would have thought he was Jesse Owens in the Olympic in the 30s. All right, great. He wants to be on college poster walls more than Uncle Bernie. Now, at this nuclear summit here in D.C., he flashes a peace sign. He flashes a peace sign like he is some 19-year-old Planned Parenthood protester from Berkeley who doesn't know any better. This is the leader of the free world. Now, if you really, really aren't sold yet on how— Well, you know, the Tomb Gang was flashing those years ago. That's Obama's president gang sign. It's peace sign. Oh, look, peace sign, bitches. I cannot stand this guy. I know, but, you know, it goes goes even further than that, right? Because one of the primary concerns at this point— No, wait, let me finish my point about how unserious this is. The biggest story that came out of this is on climate change. Is on well, nuclear bombs change. will change the climate. No, 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 no. But they were speaking about a separate climate provision signed with the U.S. and China. That was that was the big that was the big victory for this jerk off. Well, the big news that came out of it for me was two things. Um, French President Hollande was censored <laughs> uh, during his remarks at the summit because he referred to now, despite the man this. Despite the fact this man has lifted the ban on criminal refugees coming into France from anywhere, um, he actually used the word Islamist terrorism and had a significant section of his remarks edited. Um, And then the other piece was David Cameron's very uh, upfront remarks about the risks of terrorist organizations obtaining nuclear materials and using them in attacks on Western cities with drone technologies and other things. So um, that was reported mildly and not widely, but he made some pretty um, frightening comments on intelligence and other things that say that this, this is underway, that these organizations are having these conversations about those types of materials. And, you know, Judith Miller, who we love and respect, been on the show, great book, The Story, and is very familiar with the Little e- Middle East, you know, had some significant comments about how much of this material, how much of this material there is and where it, where it lives. And I believe, I'm um, scanning quickly, um, I can't find it now. I know it was 24 countries, and I can't. There it is. Uh, 24 countries and 1,800 metric ton, tons of nuclear material. But that's I a mean, joke. it's, that's it's a joke. the risk is know. real. But, that, but that's, that, that's a joke. They don't know. You had this moron running around, and he made a point in his press conference of saying, well, well like, uh, there is basically no more, no more, no more nuclear phys- uh, material in South America, in South America, in South America. 
in South America, because do you know what I lay awake at night worrying about? If those crazy South Americans are going to get their hands on some fissionable material, okay? The last thing you had to worry about in South America were the old Nazis that escaped, who right now, if they're still alive, are about 178 years old. Uh-huh. Right? So well, that and Nazis, trying to get toilet paper in Venezuela. Escape Nazis and, 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 and South America doesn't have nuclear material. I, I mean, it's an absolute joke. And, 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 and to my mind, the Russians and the Chinese see this. I mean, they're thumbing his nose at this guy. I'm going to tell you something. When Ronald Reagan said he wanted to have a nuclear summit, Oh, 50 of the world leaders didn't show up and uh, get a photo op in front of a thing with a peace sign. No, you know what happened? The Russians got together and said, we should go talk to crazy old man. Why we have to speak to him? We are Russia because he will blow us off face of map. And you know what happened in 1989? That wall fell, baby. Coming back into the top of the 12 o'clock hour, closing out the fast of hour in conservative radio. J.D. and Stacey going to bring you some nonsense of the world. But right now we're going to pay a couple of bills. J.D. and Stacey, game on. Part of that conservative commandos radio network here on that K98 Talk. Be back in about 2.30. Everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in. Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. Can I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back, top off your mimosa, and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with boots. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level, or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget. Web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com.
Welcome back. J.D. and Stacey here on a Sunday morning carrying your mainstream media hangover. Game on. Part of that conservative commandos radio network on K98 Talk. Everybody get over to K98talk.org right now. Say hello to Stacey. Join the conversation. Remember, guys, we're live here on K98. Tuesday, Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Friday, 5 p.m. We are the drive time leading to that Yahoo Sports on 1360 a.m. WNJC. And after the show, Hoople's not doing it. When you're looking for that J.D. and Stacey fix, you get over to Spreaker.com. Hashtag J.D. and Stacey. J.D. A and D S T A C E Y. Find out all the shenanigans and nonsense that have been going on. For those of you who know to the show and would like it explained, our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean his shenanigans are cruel and tragic, which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Evil shenanigans. I sh- Evil shenanigans. Don't like- tell any. Don't tell anybody. But we're talking about Hannity at the end there. Evil shenanigans like selling your soul as supposedly a Eric Bowling. <laughs> yeah, chocolate Jesus. <laughs> oh my god if you guys have not seen the saturday hey, night live parody of scotty nell hughes being a surrogate for trump please go look at it oh my god but before you watch it just think of this right before you hit play hey, where are the white women at oh my god my god in heaven I, you know what I, I can't even do it justice go figure it out it's the only time i'd ever i'd ever, I'd ever advise anybody I can't remember the woman's name who plays the anchor. She also does the Hillary Clinton. She is just fabulous. She's oh funny God. as well. Get that out. Was, that, was, that, that was pretty good. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, 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 so. For those of you who don't live in Australia, you know, because Stacey and I do. Um, <laughs> Google. Thank Aust- you from the Sydney studios. Well, you know what you, you know what I find amazing is there's 11 people that live in Australia, right? And mm-hmm. somehow this one Google program on April 1st got 7 million people fired. I know. So Google, thank God it was Google Australia. So Google on April Fool's Day. Well, it's the Australians that saved us from having to deal with it. <laughs> Well, that's true because 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 of the, that, that's actually because pretty of pretty the international the, date line because of the, the flush in the toilet that goes backwards. Um, yeah. So basically, in Australia, I might it, it, Google <laughs> had a quote Gmail mic drop, which was a special version of the Gmail send button, which appends a GIF of a minion. Who, if you don't know what a minion is, those are those little yellow pill looking things with eyes. That, that run around, you see him in all the commercials and all the, uh, the, the kids' movies from Despicable Me. So there's, there's a gif of a minion, one of they call the sexless, ageless merchandising icons. Why, why do they have to? It's a kid's thing. Why talk about it being androgynous? Uh, da, 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 da. Dressed as the queen, dropping a microphone at the end of your email. Everyone will get your message, but that's the last you'll ever hear about it, Google added in a blog post announcing the feature. Yes, even if folks try to respond, you won't see it. Isn't that oh great? Oh, my God. Except, Stacy, where did they put the practical joke button? Right where the send button normally is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm kind of a creature of habit. If I didn't see the blog, I wouldn't be looking that carefully. Gentlemen, for those of you out there, you know exactly when there are two buttons in close proximity, you better be hitting that right one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> so, Stacy, And this what? is from JD, who is trying to convince... About a dozen people on Twitter that everybody needed to go to the Midget Toss and Sushi Festival in Richmond. So we really shouldn't be surprised. Oh, my. Di- no, 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 no. It's a Midget Toss and Sushi Rodeo in Richmond. I don't even understand what that means. We're going to do a whole show. If We're anybody, not. We are not doing anything with anybody, that. I hate sushi, well, and there is a Midget Prohibition. No, but it's not. It doesn't say you have to eat the sushi. It's a sushi rodeo. Even I don't know what it's. All right, so so there's a place. We're, we're going to get back to the, to, the, to, the, to the little minion mic drop thing that nobody can respond to. So there is a, there, there's a in, in Richmond, Virginia, there is a, uh, for those of you who know, I, I, I love the little people. Yeah, so there is a restaurant bar. As, as a matter of fact, I looked at it online. It's, it's classified as a dive bar, so I'm in. And it is the Richmond. No, You're not allowed in any that aren't. It's the it's the midget toss and sushi rodeo of Richmond. Of 
Richmond. I am so going. Anybody in the audience who has been there or knows of this place, please go send pictures. I will be there. Toot sweet with the quickness because, well, you know what midgets are? Midgets are like these little minion things. Okay, so back to the email thing. So now, <laughs> so basically the practical joke was, it was like, all right, mic drop. Peace out, bitches. Da, 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 da. So you would, you would hit this. It would send a mic drop to somebody. So your girlfriend's like, oh, yeah, listen, you're going to come home? And you're like, I'm never coming home, bitch. Da, da, da. And you hit it in the mic drop. And she'd be like, oh, I hope you were kidding. But the way it was set up, you would never get the responses. Well, the problem was they put the practical joke button right next to the send button. So do you want to pick it up, Stacy, with the guy who got fired or the funeral home? Oh, my God. There was a writer that was submitting changes to a freelance article who never got the replies from the editor, found out about it from an angry voicemail. There was a guy who was in the final stages of negotiating an employment offer and, well, lost that job with the mic drop. And then somebody sent, I believe it was um, a, a, a email indicating that someone had passed away. Let me, let me read this to you. Let me read this oh to you. Oh, my God. Now, I want you to paint a picture in your head. So if you hit the practical joke button by mistake instead of the regular send button, your email went with a picture of a minion dressed like the queen – doing a mic drop, and the way it was set up, you would never see the responses from the other person. So, from a poor, poor individual, Melanie, we're so very sorry to hear of the tragic loss of your daughter. Your brother-in-law, Louis, suggested we reach out to you to begin funeral arrangements. Please let us know how we can be of assistance to you in this difficult time. Sincerely, Jonathan Anderson of the Walker Funeral Home. And there's a picture of a minion dressed as a queen doing a mic drop, and he never got the responses. Now, back to the author, because this is definitely worth... This is definitely worth 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 reading. The guy da, 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 da. So the author that Stacy was talking about. Thanks to Mike Drop, I just lost my job. I'm a writer and had a deadline to meet. I sent my articles to my boss and never heard back from her. I inadvertently sent the email using the Mike Drop send button. There were corrections that needed to be made on my articles and I never received her replies. My boss took offense to the Mike Drop am- animation and assumed that I didn't reply to her because I thought her input was petty hence the mic drop i just woke up to a very angry voicemail from her which is how i found out about this quote hilarious prank (laughs) oh Oh, well you know you know what the folks at google probably did after they completely i hate this place nothing works here that's what they did yeah (laughs) i've been here for seven years oh my god i think the guy they fired from google uh, after that whole horse snuggle, uh, probably showed up in D.C. last week. Who came up with the idea for that? I was like, hold on. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm all almost right. sure he no longer works for the company. <laughs> Dude, do you know where we should put this? Where? Right next to the send button, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That'd be um, funny. All right, what do we want to do? Ba, 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 ba. Oh, we got to go. We got to go to the potheads at the White House. Who, <laughs> Obama and his wife? No. No. The, the not, several thousand folks that, that hoisted a giant blow, uh, blow up thing um, and decided to take a few puffs right at the nation's capital um, to prove a point. Uh, if you didn't Whoa. know, personal possession of marijuana is no longer a... Um, crime in dc so they can't find it on you and arrest you but public consumption is still a problem you can still be fined for that i am putting in a complaint with management how was i not sent out by k98 to investigate this story (laughs) um so man so man apparently you weren't on the email list for the protest (laughs) <laughs> the whole thing. Everybody was on it, but everybody was too high to check it. So uh, th- th- this, is, this is the reschedule 420. <laughs> By the D.C. cannabis campaign, urged President Barack Obama, remember, charter member of the Choom Gang, to take action in his remaining months to office to reschedule. What the hell is reschedule? Let me tell you something. That means about- according to the narcotic classifications, make let it me, less. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something about marijuana. Okay, let me tell you something about marijuana. Okay, kids. Um, if you smoke marijuana, there is no schedule, okay? 
<laughs> you, if you smoke marijuana, you have to reschedule lots of things. Okay. <laughs> but this 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 event was actually groundbreaking in one huge way. Well, well, normally if you go to a big leftist protest, right? When they leave, it's a mess. These hoopals were so excited that only two people received $25 tickets for smoking in public um, that they actually forced one another to clean up the litter from the protest. It's a Grateful Dead con. Let me, oh, oh, okay, all right. So, so you and I have been, 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 been to how many concerts of different stripes, right? You have, you have bands out there that have mosh pits. You don't have fights at a Grateful Dead concert. You don't. You know, you don't have you don't have fights at a Dave Matthews concert. That's you why don't. Jamaica doesn't have really high rates of violence. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're well, well, not when we're high, man. <laughs> I've never been to a violent Rasta concert. Uh, Stace, Stacey, we have less than a minute left. Save me from myself with the headline and my head thinking, Bill Clinton struggles to fill room in Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, God. Well, one of the big secret weapons that Hillary Clinton was supposed to have in her campaign because she is such a horrible retail candidate is her husband, Bill, who, despite being a complete pig and maybe not the best person, still seemed to have the charisma that people liked him. Well, now even Bill is not um, helping her very much, and basically came and spoke to an empty room in Appleton, Wisconsin. And the reason that we broke this story a couple weeks ago is because it's not heart surgery. Bill Clinton's got AIDS, baby. Access is out of conservative it. radio wrapped up here on K98 Talk. Stacy and I are going to take off till we see you again live Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard here on this K98 Talk. This is the part of the program even on Sunday morning now. We got our own car, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. You got them keys? I got them keys. Let's get out of here. All righty. Hey. Tell the nice people where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at Scott's Fire, S-C-O-T-S-F-Y-R-E, or on Facebook at Stacey Lennox. And you can find me at Game on JD on the Twitters, and I don't know. I need some new hobbies. I never find ones that are healthy, but sometimes they're cathartic. We'll see how that works out. Still got the bulletproof vest. Somebody's going to take a shot at me. If not, I'll see you guys Tuesday night. I'm looking for you, you Occupy freaks, with your glitter bombs. Bring it on! Bring on the glitter. Everything has changed. Everything has changed in the last few years. Conservatives used to take it, and we're not taking it anymore. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, 
and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino. And how to get the money you need when you need it, simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works.